Welcome back to the rig review and today I'm going to check out the monkey rig from Pro Rigs. And if you're not familiar with Pro Rigs, I did the recommendation video. I will link that in the description and you will check it out here in the upper right corner. And it's a fantastic rig service that gives you, I can show you here, a bunch of characters. Look at that. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. They're awesome rigs. They're more coming every month. And if you're new, just go to the account, check out downloads. And there you can download the install bundle. You can check out the whole library. You can also download them separately if you want. And if you have any questions on how to download that, go to my account and help videos. That's literally what I did. I checked this out and you have how to install the actual rigs, the picker, the color system, transfer your license, and so on. There is a lot out there. So if you have any questions, it's definitely all there. And of course, I want to point this out on my Animation Buffet site where I also post other rigs and other rig reviews. If you have any rigs you want me to post, I will add that to my list and add that to the site. It's a whole collection of rigs that you can find. Some are free, some are paid, but check it out. That's Animation Buffet. Now, this is the rig in all of its glory. It also comes with a picker. Now, when you open the picker, and I can show you quickly here, this is the picker that you get. You can install this, of course. You get this which is pretty cool and it depends how you import the reference if you're referencing or if you just open the scene so for me i click on this here and nothing happens because i just opened the rig and if that's what you do you can see that the namespace is probably different here so all you got to do is go on the picker here click on that n namespace change here i got no namespace i hit set with nothing in there and now when I select this, you can see it does select whatever you need. I can select the hand, select the head and so on. The other thing about the picker too is that instead of going in here and moving things around and potentially zooming in and out to readjust, you can just hit this here and it's going to zoom in here, right? You can go back to body, hand, feet, facial, tail and so on. That is pretty nifty. I like it. So as you check out your rig, you might see that you don't have all of these controllers here. So check out all of these main controllers. So on the big one here, you got your base parents, right? That is to move all of this around. And it's not super fast. Why? Because if you select this one, you get the geo complexity. And if I hit this here, you can see how the geometry is going to change. You put this to zero or one, you can see how there is a difference. I'm going to put this to zero just for speed reasons. You get geometry visibility, right? You can turn this off, which is awesome to block out. Keep things simple and the legs as well. You have extra controls here. So that's what I was talking about. So in here, you got the gimbal, you got the body polish, and you also have face polish to go in there, which will then match more with what you have here in the picker. And these rigs get frequently updated. So if you do feel like something is not matching or not working, let them know. They will update the things because it's still brand new. They have things to iron out, but so far it's been pretty smooth. I know some of my students have used their rigs and they had some issues with some of, for instance, some of these controls not matching what's going on here. That has already been fixed. So they're very up to date. It's a very responsive staff. It's fantastic. I love it. Again, back on here, you have all of these visibilities on off and you also have this controller here. So when you have the rig in all of its glory there, you have the original shader, but you can also go to custom and then you can start changing the colors like that. So whatever color you have and also exposure, whatever you want to do here. And this goes for the teeth, the tongue, gum, eye, iris, and pupil. So lots of options there. As always, start the feet. I don't know why, as always, but I start from the bottom. This is your foot controller. Check this out here. You got foot roll, foot bank. So you have all of these controller on here in the channel. I always like this one. Criminally underused in animation, dare I say. You got the uh, the heel pivot like that. You got the toe pivot like this. Toe spin and foot squash. You don't always see that on rigs. That's pretty cool. Of course, you can also go in here and when you select it like that, you can move this around. That is for just, so can you scale? Yes, you can. I'm always a fan when you can. You can see that you have this adjustment here to move that around as well. You can see also all the controls in here. You have, of course, separate controls for the fingers here. And you have this one here to do this as a group for some quick blocking. So a bunch of options, including here. So you have quick ways of curling and spreading and slide. That's pretty interesting too. I like that. It has lots of options. So if you are 
you know, wanting to quickly block something out with quick poses, that's there as well. Again, you got a bunch of options here, rotations as well, and so on. And you have the upper leg stretch, auto stretch, foot scale as well. You can do a bunch. Now, if I go back to here, and let's say I do this as well here, you can see these are your classic bambos or whatever you want to call it, and you can scale. Now, of course, this is on both feet. I know why I always mention this. You would assume that it's on both. Yes, it is on both. You got the pole vector here for this, but you also have a pin, which is great. I love it. It gives you also a box, and then you can move this around, which is awesome. You don't have to use the pole vector. You can also go back to the foot controller and you have this twist here if you prefer that. And if you go back to the box controller here, you can also switch from IK to FK. You can see how it switches here. And now we got these boxes and you have that. You can also scale this just in case. Again, big fan. And then let's go back. So as we go up here, you get to the hips. This is how the hips function here. You have extra controller here. So this is your root to go up and down. And then you have this one that is also the root. You can see this is the root gimbal. And then this one is just the regular root. This is for your hips. So you have that outside that you can move. Can you scale? Yes, you can to some degree, but you can move this out and reshape this. And speaking of scaling, just to go back, when you select this one, you do have the global scale on this controller. So if you select this here and go like that, nothing's happening that is on the global scale. And by the way, also, if you want to select, you know, the geometry and it doesn't work, that is also on there. That is the display type here, right? Normal template and reference. Anyway, let's go back and go to this controller here. We are now at the torso section. You have this and yes, you can scale, including this one here. You can translate and rotate. You can have this here for extra shaping. I have the atom polish on. Let's turn this off so you can see what is the uh, the base control option. So you got that, get all the way up here. Again, you can translate, you can rotate. You have volume compensation on and off. You also have breathing on this. So as always with any rig, always check out what's in the controller option, the channel control there. You never know what's on there. And since it's back here, you got your tail like that all the way to here. Now this you can translate and it gives you this and then you can rotate that around like that. You can take these and also rotate these and you can translate that to get into different kind of shapes. Can you rotate this? You can. So be very mindful of what you move and how you rotate it and how it's going to shape your tail. And now this here, you can pin the tail, which is definitely interesting if you're going to rest on it. And this also has different types of move all for the cock, for the hips, for the chest and the head. Just be mindful of how much you translate this in, you know, as you get some geometry complexity problems there, but that is not unusual. Now, don't forget, I am also in the complexity that's zero, right? So this is going to smooth out your tail, just in case you're wondering why this has edges. Let's get to the shoulders. You got this going on here. Now this is on IK. So if I lift this up, that's what you get. And you're going to bring up your wrist and you're going to have to find the controller in there to make quick adjustments. This is where the picker comes in handy. And that's to adjust. Now there is no auto clavicle. I'm looking at this here. And even if you go back here and it's probably right there, there you go. You change it to this. And then you take the arm here and lift it again. There's no auto clavicle. So you're going to have to select the shoulder, bring this up and then bring this up like that. So depending on what your preferences, if you like auto clavicles or not, you can always write the developers and ask for any kind of tweaks. Let's go back here again. IK, you got different world spaces here. You also have stretch. So if you select these, you can see how much you can stretch volume compression. And then also again for the fingers, I'm selecting everything here, but you can do that as a whole or of course go in there separately and then move this around and translate and scale to some degree take that last one scale it there you go tom and jerry style when they hit you know a big thumb and they oh <laughs> that goes up there you got that including all the way to the base here for all of that you can select this this is again your at this point fk 
but you can select that as well. Go back here and go back to IK if you want. And again, IK, just in case you're not familiar, it will keep the wrists where they are. That being said, what this has is if you move the arm around, your IK hand is going to stay put in that same orientation. That is very typical of an IK arm, an IK hand. I would love a switch, which, um, and a different rig, the Vixen rig, I'm going to put that in there as an overlay. But as you move the IK arm around, the wrist is actually oriented and stays oriented to the forearm at all times. So you don't have to counter. This is a very typical IK flag for students when they animate arms in IK. Besides having no arcs, because you know, because it's all translate based, uh, they also have the orientation of the wrist constantly in the same position, which just looks very much like an IK arm. And I love when a rig has the option to fake that and you can turn it on and off. Now, as you move this, just like with the feet and uh, obviously the legs here with the knee, this is your pull vector and you have a pin, but also you can use the twist to do it as such. Auto stretch and pull vector, this is all here. Now, looking at channels again for the chest, if you are looking for a different kind of chest option where you have different options to change the spine into IK, spline and all that stuff, that is not visible there. Now you can turn all of this on, you can see all the options here, but it just gives you extra Bembo's options, but there's nothing in terms of uh, different spine setup. So again, if you're used to a different setup, you can always ask around for the uh, the staff to potentially tweak things in future updates, but this is pretty self-explanatory how this is working. You can translate and rotate to get you shape there. Now, when we get to the neck, you have this here, and of course you have the head in world space like that. Now this is chest, uh, you can set it to world. This is for something else. So when you have the root and you move this around, it is like that. And if you take the neck and set it back to chest, you can see that it's oriented to the chest. So as always, watch out what you are using when you animate. I'm personally not a massive fan of anything where when you move this, that the head stays put. Again, because it's it locks your orientations very much and it's it just looks unnatural to not have, you know, if you have a, a rotation in the chest, you move this around, it's just going to be more believable, if you take this guy, that it stays like that. And then you counter. I totally understand that this is also more work for some people, but it's just, there's just something about anything that is in world space or headline or whatever it's called for whatever rig, it just, you have to go in there and then manually counter to not make it look like that. But if just for a moment you forget and you do something like this and the rotation just stays flat, it just, it just looks very computery, not a fan. This is for your neck to you change your line here. That's all pretty cool. And then in here you have your squash and stretch, which is done like this. I actually prefer if there's a con here that you can pull this down. So if you have your controller here and you pull it down, but you can pull down and bring it up to here and the stretch is specific to where that controller is pointed at, is that English? I personally prefer that versus just a channel where you can do it like this, but that might just be me. You can change the head size here as well. Whoa, <laughs> it's pretty awesome with bubble head there. And then you also align world. So for instance, if you do neck, right? And then you change this, that is my preferred way of animating, but I'm always glad that there are multiple options. So the more options, the better. Sticking with just the head here, you have controls here for the hair, right? Oops, put the textures back on. You can move this around. You can select all of these, maybe not that big one there. There you go. So like this, and you can see what is going on with some of these hair tufts. Can you scale? Yes, you can. <laughs> A lot of controller scaling there, but that is an option there. You have ears. There you go. You can pull these. You can make this bigger, same thing here, pull this out, scale and rotate. You have options here. Again, rotate around, you can translate and you can scale. Always a family can do all of this and it's not locked. That is that. Let's go to the mouth. You got your jaw opener here. Can you scale? Just checking. Ooh, you can. That reveals the tongue. And again, this will be all much easier in the picker. But for those who don't animate with pickers, I'm not sure why you would not, because it's a, it's a time saver. So I'm gonna show you manually what's going on here. And again, you can take these, translate, scale, and so on. There's nothing else in the channel controls. You have these guys here. So that is for your lip control right there. 
put this back just a little bit on the jaw just checking there's not a control that is that there is an upper one so now you got puff options here and you also have thickness that you can change this is like that can you scale Ooh, you can if you want there is this one so if i have this this is your overall translate Ooh, and scale of course i don't know why i'm always so happy when you can scale i just like that you can tweak things and, and customize stuff and again you can go all the way back there to stuff like that now if i go back here select the main controller and i have face polish on and then go back here you see all these extra options so i can select this and there we go now you got your squash and stretch on selected areas i would still prefer one for the main head but i like that it has this here for the eating you got extra options to move this around definitely options here to move a bunch of stuff around and again if you open up the jaw let's open this here you get all the fine control of this here on top of that you mean like you got the big ones and then you got the small ones it's very cool now be mindful that if i turn everything off and just have the polys for this and then just do nerves that's all you get so if you have this on you're running away where are the other controls you got to go into NURB surfaces when you have this. Now, this also means something for a render, which I will go into later. Just want to continue quickly with the face. You got here, you got your nose control like this. You can shape it like that. This has flare options in the channels as well. If I am able to select it, there you go, like that. So as always, check out every single controller, what other options there are. Like for instance, this one has nothing. This one has the translate, but then also changes here you can see there are some options that are going along the form here so lots of options you got this for your eye socket can you scale it yes you can you have affect the brow more or less you have squash and stretch separately in here that's awesome skew this way and squint options all the way up to breaking the rig and why not i like it the more the better you have this here so you can move the eye around like this. You have the pupil like this, and then you have ooh, pupil texture move like that, up and down, the iris dilation, and squash and stretch within this, that's awesome. And then you also have the highlight in here. And then also, you can't really see this, I gotta make this slightly bigger. You can see you can move this around as well, and also follow the eye or not. So I like this, lots of options to that this is more of the nose bridge up here to move all of this around and you can shape this all around that's pretty cool for you you know if you have any type of uh line of action in the mouth i mean you can go all the way to whoa into moving things around like that and then on top of that still adjust for this and so on and then you can move this around and stretches can you scale this scale this closer and do a bunch of stuff always a fan of those options like i said again here's another control to do your squash and stretch this way this is attached to this where you can see where the pivots are so you got the main controller for squash and stretch and all those smaller ones if we get to just quickly the eyes you have eye follow like that you also have follow head yes or no so if i move my eyes around like this it's like this and if i do follow head it stays like that which is also my preferred way i know these are like all weird potential uh, animation preferences but if i'm looking around and i move my head sometimes if you're not careful those eyes are just locked to the skull it also makes it like the character's a bit spaced out I'm not always a fan you got separate eye controls like that can you scale i don't know why you would be able to but i don't always want to check things out then you have that for your lids like i said that we have before and then you have this in here as well for reshaping. And then you have this as well for your eyebrows. So you can move this around like this, into that, into that. I'm doing an extra break here on purpose, but you can go pretty far. There's nothing locked in terms of like how far you can go. And if you don't wanna see what else we have, again, I'm gonna turn this off, face polish off. And then here we are, these are your main controllers for the eyebrows again. 
you know, you can, these are multiple selects, but you can go in there and just do whatever you want and break it. So if you are in the mood of really pushing the rig, the option is there. And just going back to the picker, when you have this here also, this is the selection of what you want to do. And then here you can change and edit some of the things. So if you want to look at, for instance, let's get closer to this, you can see there is a typo. You can just go in there, double click, and you can rename it facial if that bothers you. <laughs> and you come back in there, go back to the selection version. And there we go. There you have it. But again, selecting just facial, full body, select all, select body, key all, mirror selection. There's really a bunch of stuff in there. You got your snap options into there. Look at this. There's a really bunch of stuff there. It's a really cool uh, picker setup for sure. All right. And I did a... Very rough, very quick jump animations to see how it runs on my machine. So it's, you know, I can play, I can frame through all fairly fast. I like it. Let's go into, let me just quickly see here. It's geo complexity, take this out here and go to one. So my machine, that's how it runs. That's pretty good. One thing that I've noticed doing this, which I like a lot. So when you select your arms is that when you move them, see, they go in the same direction. Sometimes you have rigs where you select them both, but then you have one arm that goes this way and then the other arm that goes the other way. I do like that. So again, this is back to uh, the, the lighter geometry, but again, super rough. You know, I hate tails. <laughs> I went with, with uh, FK tails there, but it's fast. I mean, I can clearly scrub through I can go frame by frame I, did, I mean I didn't do really much I didn't animate any of these I didn't do anything with this it was just the basic basic controllers with some uh, hip stuff and feet and so basic uh, you know if you select this here I had uh, relaxed fingers um, working on that now the only thing I had see now I selected and I grabbed this middle mouse drag and it doesn't do anything that's the only thing I noticed that Every now and then it just it just would not do this. I can select these and now it works. Relax. See now it doesn't work. Curl doesn't work. Select all middle mouse. It works. Hit relax again and it doesn't. It's the only thing out of that's machine specific. Sometimes I notice going to IK arm and then IK back and then selecting relax would work, but now it doesn't. So I'm not sure. That's potentially my machine or not. Let me know what you have. I can, of course, go in there always manually, but that's something weird that I noticed that this wouldn't work. See any of these, but select them all. Oh, see, it did it for a little moment and now it's stuck again. I'm not sure. Maybe it's because I'm selecting something that's too much there. I'm not sure what's going on. This is working, not working. I don't know. Anybody uses this, let me know. Is this a machine specific thing of selecting this? the mouse dragon then it doesn't work uh or not that's the only thing i noticed just working on this i haven't done anything in terms of the mouth or the eyes so anything like that let me know in the comments and of course let me uh let the um the creators know they will fix this right away but that's the only thing i've noticed there but yeah it's definitely fun to work with very easy uh i did dare to do some uh IK type of uh, animation. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of tails in general. I always have some problems getting things to work. Not like, not that it's a technical problem. It's just, I'm just not good at it. To this day, I hate tails and, you know, anyway, uh, arms are rough. I mean, everything is rough. You just wanted to see how does it play real time just to do a jump. It's like a bouncing ball type of example. But it works. Happy to say. Again, let me uh, bring Maya in here just a bit. You can see I can scrub through this slow i can go frame by frame with my hockeys and that's great i mean you can scrub through that not everybody can do this so definitely happy with that one thing to know too is that when you have your scene and you're going to import the lighting setup which is here on the all rigs you have lighting stage and i can put in your standard rig once you render this just be mindful that those shapes are still going to show up because what we're looking at are these if i turn this on and off like right, that's the stuff that gets rendered here. So just, so be mindful if we do an Arnold render. And that is that for the reviews. As always, let me know, comments are open. Anybody else use this rig? Any concerns, questions, anything else you saw that I missed or anything that we can then relate to the creators. But that is it on my end. Thank you for watching and I'll do more reviews or more of these. We got the humans, we got the robots, we got a bunch of stuff coming up here. So awesome rig, cool stuff in there. 
and I know they're going to update more and uh, add more rigs to it. So I'm very excited to see what else is coming. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this, feel free to like and subscribe as they all say. Helps my channel grow and hopefully see you in the next upload.